Welcome to Tampa, Florida and the 2016 APS Annual Meeting. Now, please welcome the president of APS, Sally Miller. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining us today at the 2016 APS Annual Meeting. We're excited to be in the warm, very warm, and sunny city of Tampa this year as we bring science to practice. I'm truly honored to serve as the president of APS and am thrilled to lead this remarkable society through this year's meeting. It's been a pleasure to work with such a dedicated group of volunteer members and with our headquarters staff. I would like to take a moment to thank those of you who are joining us from around the world. We are fortunate that we are able to broadcast this session live for our friends and colleagues everywhere. While this year's meeting theme is science to practice, we have truly utilized the theme throughout all the new initiatives we've been working on this year. I chose the theme science to practice because I firmly believe that what we do in the laboratory and the field matters to the world. Basic research discoveries in plant pathology are being translated every day into solutions for critical problems in food security, food safety, and environmental sustainability. While we did not inter invent the term translational, it comes from the field of human medicine, our discipline exemplifies the translational approach to plant health science. To help translate our theme, our plenary session tomorrow will feature three outstanding plant pathologists who are actively putting science to practice. Peg Redenbaugh, a USDA ARS research leader and research plant molecular geneticist and also adjunct professor at The Ohio State University, will pre present significant progress of an international team of researchers utilizing traditional and advanced approaches to identify and manage maize lethal necrosis, a highly destructive disease that has recently broken out in East Africa and threatens food security in the region. Lena Tripathi, plant biotechnologist from the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture Bioscience Center in Nairobi, Kenya, will reveal the fascinating story of the mobilization of basic and applied scientists in the last decade to address, from diagnosis to management, the invasive xanthomonas wilt disease of banana that threatens this staple food crop in East Africa. And finally, Linda Kinkle, professor in the Department of Plant Pathology at the University of Minnesota, will bring one of the newest areas of research focused to light with phytobiome, ecology-guided insights into novel disease management approaches, describing how phytobiomes data can guide the development of new approaches for disease management. As scientists, we pride ourselves on being open-minded. But we may have ingrained ideas or unrealized prejudices about how science should be accomplished and what the requirements are for good scientists, even how scientists should think and communicate. To help us learn to appreciate and foster different ways of thinking within ourselves and in others, we have invited Professor Temple Grandin to present different kinds of minds are needed to solve problems at our Tuesday plenary session. Dr. Grandin is a professor of livestock behavior and welfare at Colorado State University. She's a best-selling author, noted expert in animal behavior, and advocate for autistic populations. Dr. Grandin will share her views on effectively using the three ways people think in problem solving and the importance of having teams of individuals with different abilities and types of minds working together to find solutions. These exceptional plenary sessions will provide us with excellent professional and personal takeaways. Now please join me in welcoming APS President-Elect and 2016 Annual Meeting Program Chair Tim Murray, who will share this year's meeting highlights. Thank you. 
Thank you, Sally, and uh, good morning, everyone. After a year of planning, I am thrilled to see this meeting underway. Uh, before talking about the meeting highlights, I want to thank the members of the annual meeting board for their contributions and hard work throughout this past year. Would the following individuals stand as I read your name and audience, please hold your applause until the end. Program Vice Chair Mary Palm, Annual Meeting Board Director Amy Charkowski, Annual Meeting Board Members Jeffrey Rollins, Cruz Avila Adame, Kira Bowen, Kelly Ivers, Peter Ogiambo, Naidu A. Rayapati, and Jerry Wheeland. Thank you all for your hard work on AMB this past year. In addition to our highly regarded special and technical sessions and hot topics presentations, we have been working to bring you some more unique ways to engage in our science at this meeting. FIDO views are back with more facilitated conversations that explore questions and issues relevant to plant pathology as we explore different points of view. This year we have biologicals and biological control, the next generation of plant health products, and changing regulations in the face of changing technology. For informal conversations on a wide range of specific issues of interest, join one of our Idea Cafe roundtable discussions in the exhibit hall on Wednesday morning. New this year, we are eager to present pods or conversations with pathologists of distinction. Based on the well-known and popular TED Talks, Pods offers meeting attendees in all stages of their career an opportunity to connect with APS fellows. This year, our inaugural class of Pods, Barbara Vallant, Bob Gilbertson, Jackie Fletcher, and Bill Fry will discuss their career journeys in an informal setting. Please join us this afternoon and tomorrow afternoon for these talks. With the success of last year's Take a Walk sessions, we are excited to bring back this unique session format with Florida wetlands, mangroves, and more at the Florida Aquarium. Those will be tomorrow, oh, excuse me, Tuesday and Wednesday morning. Pre-registration is required. And if these opportunities weren't enough, new this year is Fido Cafe. Join us in the exhibit hall on Wednesday for a morning filled with poster huddles, idea cafes, exhibits, and poster viewing. It wouldn't be a Fido Cafe without coffee, tea, and a light breakfast snack, all provided at no charge. The APS annual meeting is the place to network and reconnect with your colleagues. And we have several opportunities uh, for this year's meeting, as well as a handful of new ones, including the APS Career Fair and APS Connects Networking Social. And several of these are listed uh, on the screen. Find new contacts or make lifelong these events. The 2016 APS Meeting mobile app is better than ever. App into the meeting to browse the program schedule, exhibitor list, posters, and general information. Customize your schedule and add appointments. Access session information, including full abstracts. Add exhibitors to your to-do list. Send messages and make appointments with other attendees and schedule posters by appointment. Download the app using the free annual meeting Wi-Fi. APS is happy to offer free Wi-Fi in the convention center for this year's meeting to keep you connected throughout the meeting, and the login information is on the screen. And last, but certainly not least, after an incredible week of the best science, we'll close the meeting with Tampa on the Bay. Beat the heat while you take in the Tampa experience, enjoy Florida cuisine, great conversation, and music by the Bay Kings Band. Throughout the annual meeting, take in all of the scientific knowledge presented in the sessions and at the posters, meet with colleagues and old friends, and most of all, have a great time this week. Thank you, Tim. It's been a great year for APS. I would like to take a few moments to highlight some of our society's accomplishments. APS has developed several new offerings to help disseminate our robust collection of valuable resources and research. 
I'm most excited to announce the launch this month of our new open access journal, Phytobiomes. Our journal strategy task force, led by Nick Grunwald, recommended this move into the realm of full open access publishing on the last day of last year's annual meeting in Pasadena. From concept to launch in just under a year is truly an extraordinary accomplishment. Phytobiomes is now accepting manuscripts and the first submissions are already in process. The journal's strength is in its strong, multidisciplinary editorial team led by Editor-in-Chief Carolyn Young and Associate Editor-in-Chief Linda Kinkle. So if you have a manuscript ready, or nearly ready, consider becoming a part of history and submit it to Phytobiomes. Another advantage for you early adopters, article processing charges for the first 45 articles will be deeply discounted make sure to stop by the bookstore in the exhibit hall to meet with the editors and learn more about this exciting new journal. We are committed to improving the author experience for our journals. Thanks to additional recommendations from our journal strategy task force and the hard work of our editors in chief and staff, we have streamlined the author instructions and developed a single landing page for all of our journals to find at a glance just what you need to know. We are currently re-envisioning our other information platforms, including Plant Management Network and Plant Disease Management Reports through the task forces that are led by Christy Palmer and Carrot Cox. Our journals are taking on a new lateral transfer process to help authors find the right publication for their manuscript. You may be like me uh, and sometimes not being quite sure which APS journal is right for your manuscript, but not wanting to face resubmission to another journal if the match wasn't quite there. With lateral transfer, great manuscripts may find the right home in the APS journal family without going through the review process again. Additional digital resources have also seen upgrades. We have expanded the growing APS image database with the addition of 2,500 new images. We now have more than 4,500 images from Compendia and the plant diseases caused by bacteria CD. This database is really valuable because it includes descriptive metadata you won't find in other image databases. Our Turf and Tomato MD apps have been updated and users will see improved functionality. New features include an easy to use keyword search to instantly find diseases by name or words associated with the disease description and its symptoms. Plus a convenient tagging function lets you mark favorite diseases for quick reference. We have a demonstration station in the APS press area of the exhibit exhibit hall where we'll be offering free demos of both the tomato and turf MD apps. We're also excited to offer a few special discounts to our tomato and turf enthusiasts. Download both the tomato and turf app for just 99 cents during the annual meeting. Once you have turf and tomato MD on your phone, visit the APS press area and grab a free cell phone wallet. And finally, though some of our products move to a digital landscape, our print publications are still as valuable as ever. We shipped more than 25,000 copies of our farmer's guides to soybean diseases and corn diseases this year. We especially thank the editors and authors for making these guides a reality and congratulate Editor-in-Chief Darren Eastburn and everyone who helped APS Press uh, achieve this amazing feat. An accompanying app is also available, so learn more about that at the APS Press Bookstore. Well, APS is the best source of plant health knowledge because of our members. We have been working to enhance the membership experience over the last year and have made significant strides. APS is committed to establishing strong connections with our colleagues worldwide. In January, we officially launched the new Developing Economy Discounted Membership. We want to encourage you all here, and those of you watching live, to join APS through this new program or encourage your colleagues from around the globe to join us. 
Continuing to develop critical relationships worldwide, APS signed Memoranda of Understanding with the Plant Pathology Societies of Brazil and India. To promote active collaboration and tangible outcomes, working groups have been established under these agreements and are being coordinated under the Office of International Programs. It's also been a focus over the past year to streamline and coordinate our early career activities. The new APS 2026 Professional Development Forum brings together the great professional development ideas and activities of our many boards, offices, and committees under one umbrella with Rene Rio at the helm. I urge you to take a look in the careers area of the website to find relevant resources to help you take your career to the next level. For the first time at this year's meeting, we are offering Reviewing a Manuscript 101. This session is designed to present the best practices for conducting a peer review of a scientific manuscript. Upon completion of this session, attendees will be added to the database as a reviewer. If you cannot make it to the session, keep an eye out for the recorded version after the meeting. We thank our APS Office of Education under Tom Mitchell's leadership for developing this offering. Our Public Policy Board was instrumental in the traction that we realized this year for phytobiomes awareness. In March, we launched the Phytobiomes Roadmap developed by an interdisciplinary group of researchers led by key APS members listed here. The successful unveiling in Washington, D.C. gave key policy personnel a look at why increased funding for phytobiomes is so important. On just on this Friday, we hosted the Foundation for Food and Agriculture Research's convening meeting on phytobiomes to help define the scope budget, and timeline of potential FAR funding in this area. APS is also a founding sponsor of the new Phytobiomes Alliance that is just being initiated. With implementation of the actions outlined in the roadmap well underway, I encourage everyone's participation in these exciting new opportunities. Stop by the PPB booth to learn more. This year, we'll take an in-depth look at your meeting experience. The annual meeting board understands that attending our annual meeting is a choice, so we are actively working to provide attendees a high-value experience with the best science and networking. We are in a unique position this year, as we'll be planning both our 2017 annual meeting in San Antonio and the International Congress of Plant Pathology in Boston in 2018. This Congress will be a global summit of leading scientists focusing on the sustainable production and protection of plants. The theme of the Congress is Plant Health in a Global Economy and presentations will cover the full range of research topics that affect plant health at a local and global scale. As we move closer to the Congress, many of our boards, offices, and committees will be charged with thinking globally about our meeting programming. We look forward to everyone's involvement in this grand event. Save the date because it will be here before you know it, and please watch for more information. And now, to hear how we support all of these undertakings, our treasurer, Steve Slack, will provide the APS financial status report. Steve? Thank you, Sally. Fiscal year 2016 was a financially impressive year for APS, and one in which we met or exceeded the majority of our financial priorities. The categories in the first column represent each of the business centers for APS. For the year ending June 30th, 2016, APS had an unaudited net income of $281,662. The total revenue for the year was $5.8 million, and the total expenses were $5.5 million. On this chart, please note that the last column reflects a distribution 
of overhead across all income categories. You might think of this as the cost to each business center incurred by the use of headquarters staff. APS has been reinvesting the surplus dollars into innovation projects to help drive the financial health of APS. As I mentioned, revenue for APS was almost $6 million. The breakdown of this revenue falls into the following categories. Journals, you can see phytopathology, 16%, plant disease, 18%, MPMI 13%, and this equaled 47% of the society revenue. APS Press totaled another 23%. 15% of the revenue was derived from last year's annual meeting. Plant Management Network brought in 6% of the revenue, and member dues comprised 6% of the total revenue. Our journals and publications continue to serve as the bread and butter of our society, equaling 70% of our revenue. APS Press has many new titles and products now arriving, as well as the new Phytobiomes Journal. And this will bolster the impact on income in the next year. With respect to the $5.5 million in expenses this year, the breakdown of cost incurred as follows. 13% from member services, including the Office of Public Relations and Outreach and the Public Policy Board. 12% were from last year's annual meeting. Journals comprised 26% of cost. Plant Management Network was 3%. APS Press spent 21% of total resources and 24% were general and administrative expenses. This category includes the building, equipment, technology, phones, bank fees, and insurance costs. Publications and journals accounted for 47% of year's expenses. Over time, APS has been profitable from its operations. The red line includes investment in pension fund activity. You can see that we, as a society, benefit greatly from the good management of our business centers, which tends to mute the external factors that are shown on the red line. This concludes my financial report, and at this time, I'd like to welcome David Goduri to the stage to report on APS's membership efforts. Thank you, Steve. I'd like to welcome the nearly 1,500 APS members and their guests in attendance to our 108th annual meeting. I, I know you've all been waiting all year long for the statistics on our membership, uh, so let's get started. Our present membership worldwide stands at 4,579, with nearly 3,000 regular professional members. Our student and our emeritus membership categories are growing, and a smaller percentage of our members are now postdocs. We have added over 150 undergraduate student members through the Borlaug's Army Initiative, which is a provision of a free membership in APS to any undergraduate engaged in an internship or work experience in plant protection anywhere in the world. Many of our members are transitioning to retirement, and graduates are stepping into some of those recently opened positions. Many of those positions are advertised during this meeting. If you're close to graduation, finishing up a postdoc, starting your career, looking for job candidates, or building your professional network, this meeting is the place you need to be. Our society is based in the United States, but we're truly international, with over a third of our membership distributed among 96 countries worldwide. We have our strongest presence in Asia and Europe. The five countries with the largest number of APS members are China, 
Canada, Japan, Australia, and edging out Brazil for the number five spot for the first time this year, India. Now, as part of my report to the APS membership each year, I try to pick out an important issue and, and bring that to your attention. This year, I want to talk to you about APS Foundation. By now, many of you may have received the envelopes that are being distributed uh, throughout the audience. Just hold on to those for a moment. Uh, don't open them. The APS Foundation is the charitable arm of our society. Among its many activities uh, is that the APS Foundation supports student participation in this meeting through its travel awards. In fact, it's done so now for 20 years and it's handed out nearly a thousand awards. Now, that's an astonishing accomplishment for a society of our size. That represents nearly a quarter of our membership. That means it's almost inconceivable that anyone in this room has not benefited directly or indirectly from the activities of foundation, either by having received a report themselves or by the foundation's support of a student, a colleague, or a friend. But I'll tell you something else that is more astonishing and that's that only 5% of APS members have made a donation to Foundation in the last year, and only 11% of our members have donated at least once in the last five years. Now, as a profession, we have a well-deserved reputation for economy and thrift, <laughs> but this really stretches credibility. In every survey conducted of our membership, nearly 80% of us think that we should increase support for student participation in our society's meetings. Now, some may think APS Foundation is supported by the membership dues that you pay. It is not. APS Foundation operates entirely upon the generous gifts of apparently a very small proportion of our members. So, we, we obviously have some work to do on reconciling our principles to our practices. Now, we get to the envelopes, each of which contains a crisp new $1 bill with George Washington's picture on it. I'd like to ask Bill uh, Dolzel, the Chair of Foundation, to help me out here for a moment. For those of you that have yet to experience the joy that comes from sharing your good fortune with others, you can write your ID badge number on the envelope. It's right on your badge. That's your member number in APS. And give it to any one of the volunteers, like Bill, at the foundation booth, which is out near the registration desk. In fact, you might want to add a few more bills to that envelope, just so George doesn't get so lonely in there. He probably would have liked Lincoln. Uh, he would have greatly enjoyed the company of Hamilton. George might not get along so well with Jackson. Jackson was a, a complicated man. So you might want to pair Jackson with Ulysses Grant. Uh, the two of them would probably get along famously together. And then you just give that envelope to one of the many volunteers at the foundation in the booth. There, done. It's that so, easy. Thank you, David. So thank you, Bill. They also take checks. They also accept credit cards, and Bill informs me that if you have one of these fancy smartphones, you can even use that. So, thank you, thank David. You, Bill. So, thank you, everybody. Please take this as subtle encouragement to connect with APS Foundation. It takes so little of your time and resources to have a major impact on our collective future. For the cost of three cups of coffee, this assembled group could sponsor an additional 30 students at the national meeting next year. We'll all be better off as a professional society if we become a little less addicted uh, to, uh, to our minor vices and a little more addicted to giving. Now, as an additional incentive, the first 50 people who give more than $100 will receive a free copy of the book of our plenary speaker, Temple Grandin, entitled Thinking in Pictures, and Dr. Grandin will be available to autograph those copies after Tuesday's plenary session. Now, on, uh, on a more somber note, 
Since our society last met, we've lost a number of our friends and colleagues. Some departed after very long lives and others left us all too soon. Please join me in a moment of silence as we pause and reflect on the lives, the memories, and the contributions of colleagues uh, that we've lost this past year. Thank you. I'm now pleased to return the program to President Sally Miller. Thank you. Thank you, David. I would like to recognize APS counsel that have served with me this year. Would council members please stand as I read your names. Uh, please hold your applause until I've read everyone's name. Tim Murray. Oh, you're over there. Right. <laughs> Mary Palm, Rick Bennett, David Gaduri, Steve Slack, Eric Tedford, Lindsay Dutoy, Paul Vincelli, Lawrence Statinoff, Nick Grunwald, and Amy Hope. It's been my honor and privilege to serve with you. Thank you. And now let's welcome our incoming council members. Kira Bowen is our incoming vice president, and Gary Monkvold is our incoming councilor at large. Additionally, Jay Scheidt will be joining as the new divisional councilor. Congratulations and welcome. We are pleased to recognize the member leaders who are completing their terms this year. Please stand as I read your name, and again, please hold your applause until the end. Ronald French Monar, Jackie Fletcher, Thomas Wolpert, Jana Beckerman, and from Council, Rick Bennett, Eric Tedford, and Lawrence Datinoff. We truly appreciate your service to this organization, and thank you. What we've accomplished this year would not have been possible without our volunteers. Our society is in the enviable position of counting many volunteers among our membership who assure that APS remains vibrant and relevant. I want to express my sincere gratitude to each manuscript reviewer editor, editor-in-chief, committee member and chair, session moderator, board, office, task force, and forum member and leader, and council member for his or her commitment to APS over the past year. Please join me in a round of applause. Now, please help me welcome our APS immediate past president, Rick Bennett, to the stage to accept the official president's scroll. It's been a real pleasure for me to serve with Rick during the past three years. His dedication to the promotion of our science, both at home and abroad, has been an inspiration to all of us. He led us with a steady hand during his presidency and established initiatives that have kept us moving forward. While Rick is leaving the presidential team, he won't get the break he deserves until this time two years from now, since he is serving as president of ICPP 2018. Rick, it's with great pleasure that I present the APS President's Scroll to you today. This scroll is a testament to your incredible dedication to APS. Congratulations on the completion of your presidential term. It's now time for the awards and recognition uh, portion of our program. 
I am pleased to commence officially the 2016 Awards and Honors Ceremony this morning. It's a great honor to recognize the outstanding service, scientific excellence, and dedication of our members at the start of our meeting. The first portion of this ceremony is focused on recognition of the APS students, early career professionals, and international scientists who have received awards this year. It's clear that we have a wealth of up-and-coming talent in APS. Thank you to APS Foundation for its continued support of our students, early career professionals, and international scientists. Let's take a look at those being recognized today in a variety of programs.
an impressive display of talent. Well, that is an impressive display of talent from our students, early career professionals, and international scientists. Congratulations to each of you. We are looking forward to your participation in the meeting and in APS for years to come. I'd also like to point out on the back of your award brochure, we've included a complete listing of individuals who received awards at their respective division meetings this past year. Join me in congratulating all of the division awardees. It is my pleasure at this time to welcome our immediate past president, Rick Bennett, to officiate the APS Awards and Honors Ceremony. Thank you, Sally. So I have the privilege and the honor to present our most prestigious awards on behalf of the society. The APS Award Ceremony recognizes outstanding service, scientific innovations, and significant accomplishments of our members. Before I continue, I'd like to thank our Awards and Honors Committee. Each year, we receive a robust amount of nominations of outstanding individuals deserving of an award, and this committee works tirelessly to help make these important decisions. Thank you for all of your hard work throughout the year. I also want to encourage all of you to nominate a colleague for an award, whether they have committed years of service to APS or have advanced the science of plant pathology. Our members are worth recognizing, so please submit your nominations by November 1st. So, we begin with the Ruth Allen Award, which recognizes innovative and impactful research in plant pathology. This year's recipient is Peter Balentkerti. Peter Balentkerti is a plant research geneticist and pathologist in USDA ARS and a professor in the Department of Plant Pathology at North Carolina State University. He is recognized for his contributions to the understanding of the genetic basis of quantitative disease resistance, multiple disease resistance, and the hypersensitive defense response in maize. Using mapping, genetic, and molecular techniques, he and his colleagues have elucidated the genetic architecture controlling natural variation in resistance to southern corn leaf blight, northern corn leaf blight, and gray leaf. Using a novel genetic technique, he has described the genetic architecture controlling hypersensitive resistance, identified and characterized pathways and molecular mechanisms controlling this process, and shown that the genetics controlling hypersensitive and quantitative resistance are to some extent related. APS is pleased to acknowledge Peter Balentkerti as the 2016 Ruth Allen Award winner. <laughs> Receiving the Lee M. Hutchins Award is Mayor Al Hawari, I'm sorry, is Maher Al Hawarni. This award recognizes the contribution of basic and applied research on diseases of perennial fruit crops, including tropical fruits. Maher Al Hawani is a project scientist at the University of California Davis Foundation Plant Services and was the lead author of a phytopathology manuscript comparing next generation sequencing to biological indexing for detection of viral pathogens of grapevine. This research showed how classical diagnostic procedures could be replaced by next generation sequencing analysis for quarantine, registration, and certification programs of clean stock grapevine materials, saving time and resources. 
His work clearly showed that next generation sequencing techniques are comprehensive, precise, and accurate. This work will have major positive benefits for regulatory agencies, clean plant programs for grapevine, and grape growers. APS is pleased to present Maher Al Khawani the Lee M. Hutchins Award. Maher? The Noel Teen Keen Award for Research Excellence in Molecular Plant Pathology is presented to Adam Bogdanov, recognizing his outstanding contributions and leadership in research that is significantly advancing our understanding of molecular aspects of plant-host interactions. Adam J. Bogdanov is a professor of plant pathology and plant microbiology at Cornell University. He is an internationally recognized expert on the molecular basis of bacterial pathogenesis in plants and a leader in the use of novel technologies derived from molecular plant pathology for genome editing. Bogdanov's research on two pathogens of rice has elucidated the mechanism by which pathogen-encoded TAL effectors manipulate host gene expression to induce disease susceptibility. His work represents cutting-edge molecular plant pathology and lays the foundation for the development of novel forms of control of two important diseases of rice. Bogdanov's research is also leading the way in the use of tal effectors to make highly precise modifications to genes in plants and animals. APS is pleased to present Adam Bogdanov with the Noel T. Keen Award. Chris Smart will accept the award on Adam's behalf. This next award is given by Syngenta to an APS member for an outstanding contribution to teaching, research, or extension in plant pathology. The 2016 recipient is Pierce Paul. Pierce A. Paul is a professor in the Department of Plant Pathology at The Ohio State University and an international leader in the study of Fusarium head blight of wheat and its associated Don toxin. Some of his most significant contributions resulted from the use of meta-analysis and other statistical approaches to characterize the relationship between Fusarium head blight and Dawn. He has evaluated the efficacy, stability, and economics of integrated management strategies, quantified grain yield and quality losses caused by the disease, and developed and refined disease prediction models. He has authored or co-authored more than 50 peer-reviewed publications in the last decade alone. He has served as a senior editor for Plant Disease and is a member of the U.S. Wheat and Barley Scab Initiative Steering Committee. APS is pleased to present Pierce Paul with the Syngenta Award presented by Eric Tedford. The William Bowright Hewitt and Maybell Allen Ball Hewitt Award recognizes a scientist within seven years of the PhD who has made an outstanding innovative contribution directed towards the control of plant diseases. This year's award winner is Matthews Parrott. Matthews L. Parrott and his team at the University of Florida's North Florida Research and Education Center 
We're the first in the United States to develop nanoparticles for management of a plant disease, bacterial spot on tomato. He also made significant contributions to our understanding of the biology of Ralstonia solanacearum. His team made a major impact in the detection and characterization of new plant pathogens in Florida and abroad. He conducts an outstanding extension program, including development of an interactive education platform, Scout, which provides the latest findings and disease diagnostic tutorials to clientele. APS is pleased to present Matthews Parrott with the William Bowright Hewitt and Mabel Allen Ball Hewitt Award. Our 2016 Excellence in Extension Plant Pathology Awardee is David Langston. David Langston is the director of Virginia Tech's Tidewater Agricultural Research and Extension Center <laughs> and throughout his career has sought to identify disease problems and develop practical management tools for growers. A major focus has been the management of fungicide resistance and development of fumigant and non-fumigant alternatives to methyl bromide. He is a recognized and sought after resource for advice on fungicidal management tactics in the southeast and mid-Atlantic regions. As an extension specialist, he has received more than 21 awards and has authored or co-authored 135 extension publications. He has served APS in editorial capacities and as chair of the Chemical Control Committee. He was president of the Southern Division in 2010 and received their Outstanding Plant Pathologist Award in 2016. David, I love those pictures. They're, they're really great, especially one of the fish there. <laughs> APS is pleased to present David Langstrom with the Excellence and Extension Award. David. Joseph Russo is the recipient of this year's Excellence in Industry Award, which recognizes outstanding contributions to plant pathology by APS members whose primary employment involves work outside the university and federal realms, either for profit or nonprofit. Joseph Russo is founder, president, and chief scientist at ZX Incorporated. Through his work, he has pioneered the development of high-resolution weather forecasts and their agricultural applications. He has worked assiduously to catalyze a cultural change wherein common databases and communication tools are used to observe and report pests and diseases, and the derived information products can be effectively used for management. Under his leadership, ZX has succeeded because for more than two decades, it has provided innovative and valuable products to its stakeholders. Their custom weather databases, decision support algorithms, data visualization tools, and information technology platforms are now widely used by agricultural stakeholders, industries, universities, and government agencies. APS is pleased to acknowledge Joseph Russo as a 2016 Excellence in Industry Award. Joe couldn't be here today, so Scott Izzard is accepting this award on his behalf. The APS Excellence in International Service Award recognizes outstanding contributions to plant pathology by APS members for countries other than their own. This year's awardee is June Bristino. 
Jean B. Restaino is the William Neal Reynolds Distinguished Professor and Director of the Emerging Plant Disease and the Global Food Security Cluster at North Carolina State University. She has worked with students, scientists, and policymakers to address emerging plant diseases in the developing world and to increasingly empower women in agricultural research. Her studies of global migration patterns of Phytophthora infestans provided evidence of contributions of an Andean source to 19th century outbreaks. Ristino has conducted Phytophthora workshops globally to improve the capacity to diagnose and manage Phytophthora diseases. She served as a Jefferson Science Fellow and has worked to enhance the global reach of North Carolina State University and APS. APS is pleased to acknowledge Jean Ristino as a 2016 Excellence in International Service Award. The awardee for the APS Excellence in Teaching Plant Pathology Award is Forrest Nutter. Forrest W. Nutter, Jr. is a professor in the Department of Plant Pathology and Microbiology at Iowa State University. He is an internationally known quantitative epidemiologist and a pioneer in the field of understanding the psychophysical basis of how humans visually perceive different levels of disease. His interactive computer programs, including the ASSESS program developed in cooperation with APS, have been used in plant pathology and IPM courses at more than 100 universities worldwide to teach students how to assess disease severity accurately and precisely. APS is pleased to present Forrest Nutter with the Excellence in Teaching Award. This year's Excellence in Regulatory Affairs and Crop Security will honor a team from North Carolina State University. The award recognizes outstanding contributions to regulatory plant pathology, crop security, and trade enhancement efforts by APS members. Congratulations to Team CIPM. Carl Suter, Yulu Zha, Kevin Bigsby, Godshin Pale Parambol, Yap van Kreschmar, Roger McGarry, Jim Van Kirk, Denisha Seth Carley, and Frank Lowe's comprise the team at the National Science Foundation's Center for Integrated Pest Management. They have become the most respected source of information for predicting and mitigating the risks of exotic and introduced pests and pathogens. Their databases and hierarchical decision support systems are critical to regulatory responses and action plans when new threats arrive on our shores. Their innovative tools and practices to protect the borders complement a continuum of national, regional, and statewide IPM programs to enhance crop security. APS is pleased to present Team CIPM with the Excellence in Regulatory Affairs and Crop Security. APS grants the honor of fellow to current APS members in recognition of distinguished contributions to plant pathology or to the society. Each fellow is also presented with an APS fellow pin. These are worn by all previous fellow recipients 
Sally is wearing one, during the APS annual meetings. This year, we honor 12 APS fellows in succession. Our first APS fellow recipient is Amy Tcharkowski. Amy Tcharkowski is an internationally recognized scientist in the Department of Plant Pathology at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. She has integrated discoveries about the molecular basis of soft crop diseases with the development of tools to detect pathogens and prevent crop losses. Her program has provided significant insights into pectobacterium host interactions that have enhanced potato breeding programs. She is a director of the Wisconsin Seed Potato Certification Program, ensuring that farmers have access to healthy planting material. She has also invested her time in helping women scientists in the Middle East and North Africa receive training in pathogen detection and seed potato production. She has served on numerous APS committees and is the director of the APS Annual Meetings Board. For her accomplishments in plant pathology and service to APS, we're honored to present Amy Tarkowski with the Fellow Award. Our next fellow is Lawrence Datinoff. Lawrence E. Datinoff is the head of the Department of Plant Pathology and Crop Physiology at Louisiana State University. He has achieved distinction as a pioneer in the use of elemental silicon to improve plant health. His contributions have increased our understanding of the role of silicon in pathogenesis, leading to its successful commercial use to suppress plant diseases. As department head, Datnoff enthusiastically promoted and expanded a vision of graduate student education that goes beyond traditional classroom and individual research activities. He has maintained a strong international program in plant pathology and served APS in numerous roles, including the Divisional Forum and as a member of APS Council. For his successful efforts in his research and outstanding contributions to APS, APS is honored to present Lawrence Datinoff, otherwise Superman, with the Fellow Award. Our next fellow is Eric Davis. Eric L. Davis is a William Neal Reynolds Distinguished Professor and Head in the Department of Plant Pathology at North Carolina State University. He is recognized for work that demonstrated that root knot and cyst nematodes secrete effector molecules to initiate and establish host recognition, and that these effectors interact directly with host proteins. He identified novel plant peptide hormone mimics produced and secreted by the nematodes in this interaction. New research avenues opened by Davis and collaborators illustrated that horizontal gene transfer plays a central role in the evolution of nematode parasitism of plants. His research demonstrated that host-derived RNAi could provide both a functional assay and a potential source of plant resistance to nematodes. For his contributions to the research of plant pathology, APS is honored to present Eric Davis with a fellow award. Our next fellow is Ann Dorrance. Ann E. Dorrance is a professor in the Department of Plant Pathology at The Ohio State University. She leads an internationally recognized research and extension program on diseases caused by Phytophthora soji, Pythium species, and Fusarium graminearum. 
Her collaborative work has identified new sources of resistance to these pathogens, developed new pathogen-resistant cultivars, and developed integrated management programs for the diseases they cause. Her impact on soybean production regionally was independently valued in the millions of dollars. She has served APS in many roles throughout her career, including APS Council as Counselor at Large and has received several awards for her work. In recognition of her professional service and impressive extension work, APS is honored to present Ann Dorrance with a fellow award. Our next fellow is Nick Grunwald. Nicholas J. Grunwald is a research plant pathologist with the USDA Horticultural Crops Research Laboratory in Corvallis, a professor at Oregon State University and adjunct professor at Cornell University. Grunwald has greatly contributed to our understanding of the population genetics of plant pathogens, especially through his innovative work on Phytophthora species. Grunwald is well known for collaborative, multidisciplinary approaches to science and the integration of methodologies ranging from the traditional to the modern. He has provided exceptional service to APS in several roles, including as chair of the APS Publications Board. He has also authored or co-authored more than 100 refereed articles in the leading journals of his discipline, which leading journals he would be quick to point out are published by APS. <laughs> For his professional service to APS and his scientific productivity, APS is honored to present Nick Grunwald with a fellow award. Our next fellow is Bernardo Latore. Bernardo A. Latore, retired in December 2015 after a long and productive career at the Pontificia Universidad Católica in Santiago, Chile. Latore is recognized for his outstanding contributions on the etiology, epidemiology, and management of diseases of tree fruit and grapevines which he conducted while developing and teaching courses in diseases of tree fruit, diagnostics, epidemiology and plant disease control, and fungicide management. He helped develop and promoted novel information on fungicide resistance in Botrytis scenaria affecting grapevines, contributed to the knowledge of Phytophthora diseases affecting raspberry and other fruit crops, and elucidated the etiology of canker diseases affecting grapevine and blueberry. For his groundbreaking research and international contributions, APS is honored to present Bernardo Latore with the Fellow Award. Our next fellow is Randy Plotz. Randy Christopher Plotz is a professor at the Tropical Research and Education Center of the University of Florida. He conducts research on diseases of crops in South Florida with an emphasis on the etiology, epidemiology, and management of diseases of tropical fruit. He has mentored 35 graduate students and five postdocs and has written several hundred scientific and popular articles, as well as four books. He has received the University of Florida's Research Foundation Professorship Award and the APS Excellence in International Service Award. 
He has served APS in numerous capacities, including as Director of the Office of International Programs. For his research, extensive mentoring, and volunteerism, APS is honored to present Randy Plotz with a Fellow Award. down the line. Our next fellow is John Roop. John C. Roop has dedicated his professional career to studying soybean diseases. As a professor in the Department of Plant Pathology at the University of Arkansas, he is known for his pioneering work on soybean sudden death syndrome as well as work on Fomopsis seed decay, frog eye leaf spot, charcoal rot, and seedling diseases. He has collaborated extensively with soybean breeders to improve disease resistance. He is also a devoted teacher and mentor and has developed strong relationships with soybean growers and commodity groups. His APS activities have included co-editing the fourth and fifth editions of the Compendium of Soybean Diseases and serving as senior editor of Plant Disease. In recognition of noteworthy contributions to the understanding of soybean diseases and a service to APS and the discipline of plant pathology, APS is honored to present John Roop with the Fellow Award. Our next fellow is Raymond Schneider. Raymond W. Schneider is a professor of plant pathology and soybean pathologist at Louisiana State University. His fundamental research has achieved the ultimate goals of explaining plant disease occurrence and discovering innovative solutions for diverse, challenging disease problems. These mission-oriented projects have led to significant advances in our understanding of host pathogen interactions and genetics as well as new strategies and tactics in cultural, chemical, and biological control of plant diseases. He has also been an outstanding mentor for many graduate students and has enthusiastically taught numerous undergraduate and graduate courses. In recognition of his advancement of our understanding of host pathogen interactions and genetics, along with his outstanding work as a teacher, mentor, and APS volunteer, APS is honored to present Ray Snyder with the Fellow Award. Our next fellow is James Schultz. James E. Schultz is a professor in the Plant Sciences Division of the University of Missouri, where his work has notably advanced our understanding of plant virus interactions. He was the first to use recombinant DNA techniques to identify a viral A. variance gene, showing that the P6 gene of the cauliflower mosaic virus was responsible for triggering a hypersensitive response in Datura and Nicotiana species, and that the same gene was responsible for mosaic symptom development in susceptible hosts. He was also the first to show that viruses could recombine with viral transgenes. He has an outstanding record of teaching and leadership. He is a sought-after graduate student mentor and scientific collaborator who has a strong record of service to APS. For significantly advancing our understanding of plant virus interactions and his outstanding record of teaching, administration, and service, APS is honored 
to present James Schultz with the Fellow Award. Our next fellow is Christine Smart. Christine D. Smart is a professor in the plant pathology and plant microbiology section at Cornell University's Geneva Experiment Station. She is internationally known for work that has enhanced our understanding of all mycete pathogens of vegetable crops, especially those caused by Phytophthora species. Her research has led to practical solutions for vegetable disease problems faced by organic and conventional growers. She instills a love of science and agriculture in people of all ages, ranging from third and fourth graders in New York public schools to undergraduates in Geneva's Summer Scholars Internship Program. She has been an enthusiastic contributor to APS, to agricultural stakeholders, and to education in plant pathology. For her leadership in research, extension, and teaching, and her abilities to investigate, generate solutions, and communicate her science effectively, APS is honored to present Christine Smart with a fellow award. Our final fellow for 2016 is George Sundin. George W. Sundin is a professor in the Department of Plant, Soil, and Microbial Sciences at Michigan State University. He is an internationally recognized plant bacteriologist whose research focuses on one of the most destructive tree fruit diseases, fire blight, caused by Arwinia amylophora. His work connects molecular studies in the lab to management of fire blight at the field level, and he has made valuable contributions in both areas. He is also a well-known extension specialist covering tree fruit diseases and their control in Michigan. He has served APS as counselor and president of the North Central Division and as editor-in-chief of the journal Phytopathology. For his recognized contributions to research and extension in plant bacteriology and tree fruit pathology, APS is honored to present George Sundin with the Fellow Award. Congratulations to all of our 2016 APS Fellows. <laughs> APS grants the award of distinction to persons who have made truly exceptional contributions to plant pathology. This award is the highest honor the society can bestow and is presented on rare occasions. This year, we're excited to award two outstanding members of APS with the Award of Distinction. Our first recipient is Stephen Lindau. Stephen E. Lindau, Chancellor's Professor at the University of California, Berkeley, is among the world's preeminent authorities in plant pathology and phylosphere microbiology. His contributions, described in more than 175 research publications and 70 reviews, have provided unprecedented insight into the complex interactions between plants, microbes, and the environment. His findings have opened new fields of research with major impacts on plant pathology and microbiology. In addition to his remarkable research productivity, Lindau has demonstrated a strong commitment to classroom teaching and to graduate student and postdoctoral mentoring, as well as service to the university, professional societies, and national and international decision-making bodies. 
for his commitment to education, APS, and the leadership in plant pathology, APS is honored to present Steve Lindau with the Award of Distinction. Our next Award of Distinction recipient is James Van Etten. James Van Etten is a professor in the Department of Plant Pathology at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln and a world leader in the field of algal virology. He discovered the first of many viruses of algae, that many algal symbionts of Paramecia harbor viruses, and that these viruses are environmentally ubiquitous. His group discovered that some chlorella symbionts can be grown independently of their hosts and exploited this finding to develop a plaque assay. This discovery provided the foundation for studies of the biology, replication, and structure of these unique viruses, which has led to a host of novel and transformative discoveries. In recognition of a remarkably productive and continuously groundbreaking research career, he has been honored by several previous awards, including the selection as a fellow of APS and as a member of the National Academy of Sciences. For his contributions to APS and the extensive and impressive research, APS is honored to present James Van Etten with the Award of Distinction. Was great. This concludes the APS Awards and Honors Ceremony. Please join us in honoring all of our awardees today. Also, please make sure you congratulate our awardees on their many accomplishments throughout the meeting this week. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy the meeting.